about attorneys, you know, That's why I'm getting into it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't, we integrate all of them, so. How are you doing this? Because actually, really, I was talking to Jim. All right, well, I'm here. I think that's wonderful. Hey, well, I'm here. Somebody's looking a little overlooked by shoulder. I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah, yeah. No doubt about it. Really? I think so. We're glad you're here. No doubt about it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,
No committee reports. There is no public hearing. And now we are on to the business for the evening. <laughs> and that is the review and maybe potentially modification to both the master plan and the parks and rec. At this point, I turn the floor over to Mr. Borden, uh, Brian, uh, to okay. help us, I guess, okay, yep. <laughs> give us a little bit of history in terms, in terms of what um, needs to be done during this period. Kind of discuss the process, if you will, yep. in terms of it being iterative. And so we'll start with the, the overall township master plan, uh, just because we'll keep agenda order, and then we'll move into the park and rec plans. They are two separate documents, and they do follow two separate paths. So uh, we'll start with the plan. So 2017-18 um, was the last time that you guys updated your master plan. The Zoning Enabling Act requires that you review your plan at least every five years. So we are approaching our five-year mark. Um, the statute, one of the misconceptions about the statute is that it requires you to update your plan every five years. It does not require you to update or change your plan every five years. It requires you to review it. So what we're really doing, I think, at this stage is getting into the review process to allow the commission to determine if you think that updates are needed. Um, if we do find some elements of the plan that are in need of updating, then we'll enter into the formal process. Um, I have been talking with Dave, and I don't want to speak for anyone, but I believe the board essentially okayed a minor right. update right. if the commission determines that one is needed. Um, so if you determine that one is needed, we'll start the formal process. So, um, and then there's a lot that goes into that. So the, the trick with the master plan is you have to follow the process outlined in the statute, whether you change one table, one map, or the entire document. So the process is the same. So what I typically encourage communities to do is if you think there are substantive items in need of updating or amending, that's what we want to focus on. But then we can also do some of the other cleanup tasks as well. Um, one of the things that we have it, at this juncture that we didn't have in 1718 is we have new census data. So we have all new demographic data. We can pop all of that into your existing conditions. But if that's the only thing that you want to update or change, it's kind of unnecessary, quite honestly. You really don't gain much by simply updating your data. Um, you, what you gain is by changing or updating future land use maps, goals and objectives, other tasks, other projects um, that you want to take on. So if the only thing that comes out of this is that you want to change or update your, your demographic data, I would probably suggest that you not go through that entire process and pay the money to simply do that because you just don't gain much from it. You know, the plan is intended to provide guidance on land use decisions for the next 10 to 20 years. And unless there is some outrageously significant change in the demographic data that would lead to changes in programming or goals and objectives, you know, that would be something that we would want to take a look at. I mean, if you're, you know, we, we all know senior populations growing. That's not new. We've known that. We know household size is decreasing. That's not new. We've known that. The new census data is going to show that. If there's something that it shows that is, again, a substantial change where things grew way faster than were projected, say the senior population in this community tripled instead of doubled or quadrupled instead of multiplied by one and a half. Well, that might lead to some other land use decision changes where we need to provide for some additional housing opportunities, some additional amenities, public or otherwise, to kind of help allow people to stay in the community. But I don't really think that most of that's going to be the case, but um, that would be the types of things that we would want to do. The, the other thing uh, that Dave and I had talked about that did come up over the course of Boy, time flies, right? So I know we haven't met since February. I'm trying to think when these projects were. We, we have had a couple of projects in since this plan was adopted that were within the sub area, um, the, the town center sub area that's outlined in the plan. There was discussion at that time about simply getting rid of that, um, that, that that plan really 
didn't bear any resemblance to how you felt the township was going to develop or how you wanted to see that portion of the township develop at that time. That would be a change that would be significant enough that um, you might want to open the plan up if we wanted to remove that. I'm not saying you should or you have to, but that's an item that has come up in the, in the course of time since the plan was adopted. So, you know, that would be another item. And again, I would suggest that if we're going to do that and go through that process, then we'll also open up the demographic data, dive into that, and then if we find some additional things we want to change as a result, that's kind of the approach that, that we would take. But um, if that's not something you want to do at this time, then you don't have to either. So part of it is going to be really making sure that, that you all get a chance to kind of go through, review the document. Um, we can do it section by section. We can do it, you know, chunk by chunk, however you want to do it over the course of probably a couple of meetings would be my suggestion. Um, or another alternative is simply you all kind of do it on your own and you come back with, you know, your notes and we come back and we brainstorm what everybody thinks and what everybody wants to do. So, you know, there's a few different approaches we can take to how we get there. Um, if you decide that you do want to go through that process and you do want to make changes, so that will be, if they're pretty minor, um, you know, at a minimum, it takes about probably six months to get through the process just because of some of the time um, elements we have to hit under the Act. So it all starts with we have to notify your neighbors, so we have to send letters to your surrounding communities, the county, SEMCOG, etc., let them know um, that we're intending to update the plan and that it will be made available for public review. And other than actually drafting the amendments to the plan, that public review process is really the longest chunk of time. So for an update, the statute requires a, is it, it's a six week uh, review period. So the process that we would go through would be, commission would review the plan. If you wanna make changes, we'll do the notice of intent to surrounding communities. We'll then start drafting some changes. We'll do the research, provide the data. Um, at such time as the commission feels the draft is ready, you would take an action, you would send it to the board, and then the board would authorize public distribution of the draft plan. That's when we start that 42-day review window. So, And then what we do then is we'll put it on the website, um, we'll email a, a link. Typically, we do most of it electronically. Most communities don't want to get 200-page documents anymore. Um, but we have to give them that option, so hopefully most of them won't want that if we do it. And we take in any comments that we get, and then the commission will have a public hearing, and we'll hear any new comments. We'll also review any written comments we receive during that public review period, determine if that warrants any further changes to the document. Um, and if it does, we make those changes. If it does not, you're then prepared to take action, um, and then you would put forth uh, basically commission acts on it, but the board can also decide to have the final approval authority over it. The trick under statute is that the commission and the board have to adopt the same plan. So the board can't change the plan that you all pass up to them. So that's one of the critical things. So um, the good thing is we have a liaison, so we would be hopeful that, you know, commission and board are on the same page. And, uh, but sometimes it does happen. And what has to occur at that point is the board has to give the commission reasons why it's not passing it and provide some items that they want you to look into further or there's some suggestions they want, that they want you to take into consideration so that ultimately both bodies are passing the same document, whether it's on that first pass or whether it takes multiple passes. So ideally, it happens on the first pass, but... Um, you know, we'll see how that goes. And then ultimately, when it gets to the board, board has the final say, they can adopt it, and then you have yourselves a brand new plan that's in place. So there's a lot to it. Um, it's, again, a minor amendment. Isn't as complicated as I just made it sound, but really that's what you have to decide first is whether or not um, changes are needed to the document. And if I may add, as planning commissioners, you, you see 
what's going on in the community. You see requests coming before you, and those are the type of things you're looking at and saying, but well, we used the master plan, that really wasn't appropriate, or, or if it would have been this way, that's something we need to consider. So you're, you're actually there, and each one of you have an idea of what's been coming before you. And in my case, oh, if I keep getting calls about senior citizens, where do we have places to live, or I have an older parent who wants to live with me, we need to accommodate. In the, in the 22 years I've been here, there's been no change in any, really. There's been no drastic change, unfortunately, in either direction dealing with financial, economic, social, you know, it's pretty steady. <laughs> so obviously up and down, but we haven't had any drastic changes. Um, in five years ago, possibly, you pretty much went page by page, paragraph by paragraph, so, and you guys know what we went through, right? Because I think other than Jim, everyone was on the board at that time. <laughs> No, <laughs> Not to say we can't do that, it's just we want to make sure that we use our time resourceful. The, the plan that you have in place, I mean, like it was a pretty, a pretty decent update. I mean, a lot of consideration and time and effort <coughs> went into it last time. So it really took your plan um, into a more forward-thinking document, um, and it brought it into better compliance with state law. There were a few things, there were some gaps from prior updates from your older versions and some things that changed in state law that were in the interim, so you had no control over it. So, you know, this document is, at least in my opinion, I think it's in pretty good shape. So, at this point, I've, I've laid out a couple of things that we know could be changed um, just based on what we've seen over the last few years. Uh, an, another good item, I guess, for the commission as we either dive into discussion more tonight or as you walk away as kind of a homework assignment for next meeting, is to go through two, two key things, because these are the critical items. One's your implement, implementation section and that table that's in there. So if you go through that list and you cross off a bunch of line items, oh, we've already done that, we've already done that, we've already addressed that, um, we don't want to do that anymore, and there's a bunch of changes to that section, and there's new things you want to add to it, that's an important consideration. The other would be your goals and objectives, because those are really important. Those are some foundation statements <coughs> of where this community wants to go from a land use perspective. So if you feel that um, some of the goals and objectives no longer uh, apply, no longer meet the needs of the community, and you want to remove, revise, add to, that's another area where you, know, you would want to, to give that some consideration. Um, in most communities, you know, when we see land use patterns change or we know that we have a shortage, we've had a lot of development reviews and we know there's a shortage of land to plan for certain things, obviously the future land use map is a really important part of the plan. I don't know that we've seen that change here. Um, that's just, that's me. I don't want to speak on a turn if others feel that you have. But I don't think we've seen those significant pushes for major changes to your land use plan in terms of the map itself. So, you know, that's the kind of thing where, again, in most communities, you take a hard look at that. Uh, but they've had pressures that you guys just really haven't seen. Um, you know, we, we get a couple of site plans a year. I couldn't tell you the last time we had a rezoning request. Um, things like that. Whereas... Some other townships and, and cities that I work with, you know, we have rezoning requests every other month. We do, you know, 85 site plans a year kind of thing. Like it's, there's, there's pressures there that are evident and you want to address those. I don't think we've seen that here. So, um, but obviously if we open it up and do go into the process, that's something we'll take a look at as well. Because if we're going to go through the process, we may as well look at the whole document. That's, that's kind of my spiel on that part of it. Okay. So I don't know if you guys have any questions at this point. That's great. Um, if not, if you have any observations or any things you want to start a discussion on, or if you want to just move on to the park plan discussion um, and do, do a little bit more reading and you know, come back next month or the month after and talk more about it. I would suggest that we, if you would now talk about the park plan sure. and how it, if there's... In, in, either an interrelationship to the master plan, or where should our eyes and minds be going when reviewing? Can I ask one question? Or do we have any gaps that um, that have occurred in the last five years that we need to be thinking about? Because I remember there were a few things five years ago that had to be added in 
Are there anything that we need to know? I mean, there's nothing that's changed in state law from okay. the last plan update. There were a couple things that either weren't as clear or were kind of missing from the last plan. Like if right. the zoning plan was an element um, that some changes in state law required. That was incorporated into mm -hmm. your current plan. Um, there weren't a lot of other items. And I, and I can't, again, I can't think of, I know we've addressed uh, solar in ordinance. I mean, so there's some things that we've already done that, that I don't really think need to be changed or, or added that, that are lacking at this point. Um, certainly nothing that, I guess, comes off the top of my head. Uh, are we going to discuss the master plan or move on? What I'd like, what I'd like to do is kind of get the overview of okay. both plans, yeah. and then, and then, then we can collectively Good. determine what areas, if any, we want to focus in. <coughs> if, if that's okay. Kind, kind of off the subject, but Dave, do you know what they're doing just south of the gravel pit on Hickory Ridge? It's all burned up now. Are, are my, they opening my, more pit up? My, what's the nearest crossroad? Hickory Ridge and where the gravel pit is. North of North of Clyde. Oh, that, yeah, I don't know what's going on way down there. I haven't been down that way. I, I go down far. So it's, 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 it's south of Lunger. It's right. south of Lunger. It's, it's Highland. Yeah, Highland. 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 Oh, it's, an, it's an Highland Township. Oh, okay. it's, it's just it's just south of our line. Okay. Yeah, I haven't. We've heard different things about okay. them putting in a, a like a subdivision or something. I, you, I usually, one of the requirements is that they would contact the local district, which would be Rose Township of Intense. And I haven't heard anything from anybody. About I went by there the other day, and it's, it's all burned up, and it, it looks like they're going to open more gravel pit. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's what, that's what, that's what it looks that's like they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Is it an expansion? Yeah, I heard you say expansion. That's what I heard. So that would be, again, that would be something that, that actually isn't that far off topic because, you know, one of the things you look at, again, if we do open it up, is we would look at the future land use classifications of surrounding municipalities, and we would identify any... Anywhere where we had some conflicts or we had some concerns about maybe what they were doing in relation to what we thought we wanted to do, but their changes may force okay. our hand to make some changes, that kind of a thing. So, you know, certainly not out of the realm at all. If there's a significant project that is either, you know, adjacent to or a, a, a major corridor that could have land use implications on the township, that might be something worth looking at, too. Parkland? Yes, please. Okay, so the parkland is a little bit different animal. Um, the parkland, so I, I, I started the master plan statement with you have to review it every five years, but you don't have to update it if you think it's in good standing. The park plan, you do have to update every five years, and that's a state requirement so that you guys stay in good graces for potential grant funding. So that is a document that has to be. Um, amended through the process every five years. Adoption date is in uh, February, early February. So the track that we would be on for this one, this is something that we need to do to keep this current. So this is that's a process we would need to go through. Um, this would be a similar, you know, kind of, at least in my mind, I'm viewing this, I think we did it with the subcommittee yeah. last time. I would envision that's probably a pretty good idea again, um, as long as um, you know the, the board and commissioners are okay with that process, just because we do have to get a little bit more in depth with the document, and again, we have to update the document. Now, that doesn't mean there's gonna be significant changes to it. Um, a lot, it's a, it's a five-year plan, and depending on what you have or have not implemented, um, it may stay very much the same but we still have to go through the full process so that your plan stays current with the state. Um, so that will entail a few different things. There isn't a, we don't have a notice of intent or anything like that, but this would be something, again, we would want the board to okay with us to move forward, which I think they kind of have, if I'm not mistaken. Again, I don't want to put words in people's mouths, but that's my understanding. Um, so uh, so my, that would be my suggestion is we try to create a subcommittee to go through the document and uh, refine it, edit it as needed. You do have to have, we have to have multiple um, public input opportunities on a park plan. 
one of which, not too dissimilar from the master plan, is a public review period and a public hearing process that we would go through. Um, and procedurally, it would go through planning commission onto the township board again. So, so the, the procedures are, are somewhat similar, but the specific details of how we do it and how we get there are a little bit different. Um, and again, the idea that in order to stay current with the state, you have to update this plan. You don't have to update the master plan if you don't think it needs it. So those are those are kind of the two big differences uh, procedurally in terms of these documents. So uh, this one, they, they both require public input. I mentioned that um, it's a little bit different, but uh, we would definitely want to go through the, um, you know, if, if there are opportunities, if we do wind up doing both, there are opportunities for shared public input settings. So we would try to do that to kind of keep things as efficient as possible. And if we're going to ask some people to come out to a workshop or whatever it might be, we may as well get as much input as we can on both on both projects. So you know, there's some opportunities there to by doing that at the same time. Um, I think we can uh, we can have some efficiencies in terms of your time, in terms of my time, which then becomes an economic efficiency as well. Plus, just the time of the residents to actually come out and participate. So we don't have to ask them to come out eight or nine different times for different things. We can have them come out once or twice and we can hit a lot of different topics with them. So that would be something we would certainly um, suggest. But again, I, I really think that the subcommittee approach is the way to go with the park plan as long as you guys are okay with that. Uh, that you don't have to do it that way. I'm not going to force your hand. Not my place to do so. Uh, but that would be my suggestion. And what would the subcommittee do? Basically, start into the plan and go page by page, um, or at least section by section. Um, anywhere there's been changes, we would want to make sure. Um, we would certainly, there, there is a, a component of it is um, existing conditions, demographic data, so those things would be updated. Um, but that if, would be done administratively, not by the subcommittee. For instance, the demographics. A lot of this is yeah, correct. inventory and wording. Correct. So, yep. I mean, no, two but thirds of this document. The actual changes to the document would be something that we would essentially, probably some coordination between <coughs> Dave and I, that, <coughs> that we would actually do to do the research, provide the info, but to put that in front of the subcommittee, especially for items like goals and objectives and uh, for your five year project <coughs> list. We want to make sure we go through that, and any projects that have occurred, um, you know, I'm not as familiar with your your park and recreation planning around here, just because I, I haven't really worked on any of those items, so I don't know if a number of these items have been uh, have been taken on and been concluded, or if none of them have, so they may all still stay the same, but or if there's some combination of the two where we take some things off and we add a few new things. That's where we would want to get the subcommittee's input. What types of things do we need to add to this? Mm -hmm. um, and then we would also get that, obviously, from the public. That's a big part of the, the public process of a park plan is what's missing, what do people want to see, what do the residents want to see out of park and recreation, not only physical parks, but also programming of, of any recreation resources. And it is the, just like a, Mara's question earlier, are there any, this is used a lot of times to um, write grants or yep. apply for grants. That's its primary purpose, quite, quite frankly. Yeah. Understood. So under that, <coughs> is there more, is there money out there that's being, through federal acts or whatever, that's being applied to this type of thing uh, that we in would In terms need? of what the state will or won't have available starting, you know, next year, I, I couldn't tell you. But there's no overarching money out there where this would not be, uh, where we'd need to modify this to go after that money that no, you're aware of. No, again, you just, you have to yeah, go through the update point. process because it has to, yeah. which, which again, in part, at a minimum, we have to, we have to update the, the base information, um, which would be the demographic stuff, which again is pretty simple. It's the demographic data and info that goes into park plans much less than, than what goes into your master right. plan. So that's pretty easy. And we do have to have those public input sessions. So it's a procedural item as much as anything. I mean, again, if you if the subcommittee determines and based on the public input, we, we find that goals and objectives are all still good, project lists are all still good, we don't have to make a lot of actual edits to that document. 
Mm -hmm. We do have to go through the process, hit all our steps, document everything um, so that we can keep it current with the state. Okay. But I'm going to, I'll ask maybe a little bit, just I, it maybe go back and look, you know, is there money out there, for instance, to produce or put in alternative forms of energy as an example. There's a lot, seems to be a lot of federal dollars chasing that space right now. If we were to put in some solar in a facility or an, a park area, would there be money that would come from that? I'm, I'm just using that as sure. an example or maybe ADA compliance. A lot of our parks are rural. You know, would, yep. is there money that's tied to ADA conformity? To get that yeah, and again, and I'm sure there there are. I don't do grant writing, so mm -hmm. unfortunately, I, it's not something that I, you know. So would that be something that the subcommittee should potentially look into, or certainly can? I mean, that's that's what you put. But the, I guess the idea is, and those are you want to go after grants after the plans adopted and accepted by the state. That's what you can go after the grants. But again, okay. Think, thinking, I guess, if you're thinking of things that you want to make sure are addressed in the plan. Correct. Then yeah, that would be yep. some combination of efforts. If there are gaps in the plan that would preclude research. us from some right. known money. They're typically park plans are, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, park plans are your goals and objectives are usually broad enough and your project lists can fluctuate um, to the point they don't they don't really they don't they don't hold your feet to the fire on exactness for most of the grants. Um, as long as there are some general statements that would support something like that, we'll use your solar example. We have a park, and we want to, you know, we want to add some solar panels to it or something. I'm pretty sure we could find a link in here that would fit, such that we could say that we're going after this grant and it's supported by our plan. Um, they're they're not usually as explicit and precise, such that they would preclude you from doing something. Like but if there are some items that you know come up as specific areas of interest, we'll want to make sure that, that we fit that in there. Okay. So would internet also be one of those pieces? It, it, in terms of how it affects parks and recreation, it, I mean it could be. I okay. don't, you know, I, I don't, I don't know if you guys are looking for a full-on recreation center in the township. In which case, that would be something where. We might want to have I just mean solar new technology, we right? As we evolve, yeah. people go to the park, they want to, you know, it's a, they, the horse stables across the street from the house, if they wanted to have internet there or something. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, kind of thing. Well, as I recall, there's lots of DNR grant money available, uh, but it always requires, it requires an extensive township match. Yeah. Yeah, and so the township has never gone sure. there because we don't have the money for the match. Oh, okay. There's a lot of stuff you can do. Well, I remember uh, there was 20%. COVID money. There was COVID money for the parks and stuff like that as well. I do remember that. That, that was just ARP stuff. But yeah. yeah. So that, yeah, a lot of times have done, done done great with the parks, but uh, they they put they put money to match. And if I may add, one of the uniqueness out here is the requirement of such large residential lots as in themselves has really taken away from a lot of need for open, clear recreational space because. Smallest acre and a half, unless you're on the lake, which is an acre, up to 10 acres. Most people figure, I mean, believe me, I have a lot of plates, motorcycles on properties, and other activities going on. So that really takes it. If we're in a city or smaller lots, and the need is a lot greater than out here because, in general, the majority of the people do the recreation on their own property because there's such size they are requirements here. So. so ours has always been keep it as natural as we can. We don't want soccer fields. We don't want cricket field. We've had somebody want to do cricket field. Uproar. You know, <laughs> horse trails and, you know, soccer fields and basketball nets and we don't want the kids out there screaming all the time. So that's where we've kind of led all along. It's been trails we like. So that's yeah, where right. we're going we have about the changes. Right? So. right, that's what we need to look at. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> that's all I have. <laughs> Oh, good job, right? Thank you very much. That helps a lot. So the, the, the beauty that we have now is we've had a pretty consistent board in terms of most everyone. Jim has been through it's this before. Been. Well, but it was five years ago, and I don't remember what I had for breakfast, so I certainly <laughs> don't remember all the details of it. But, I don't remember um, that I had. <laughs> um, that that kind of leads me to put a motion in place that we actually start reviewing this more of a 
uh, annually or a um, quarterly uh, way versus, and we don't have to make updates to the to the book, but we can start to look at this in a proactive way versus waiting for the moments. And the reason I say this, for example, like you was talking about consensus changes and, and, and the things aren't working, we're looking at it versus waiting until there's an actual, because there's quite a few items actually in here that as I went through it that I did see that there was, you know, I talked to some individuals about some of the things that I saw in there. For instance, uh, subsets that weren't uh, that are, are incorrect. The 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 one section on the um, and please stop me if I'm getting out there on this, but the roles and responsibilities of the implementation piece that you were actually referencing. Uh, the bottom piece is the planning commission as facilitators, and it's our duty under what this is basically stating is that it's our responsibility to maintain these records uh, as they evolve, right? As, and it's not something. That, and I might be wrong, you guys have been on this board longer than I have, but the last state, last sentence kind of describes, I don't have my glasses in front of me, but unfortunately, but the, it talks about overseeing the process and um, monitoring this process as a result. Uh, the township staff and the planning commission must be held accountable, ensuring that the township master plan impacts daily decisions and actions by its many stakeholders. So I understand and I hear everything that uh, is being said, um, but at the same time, though, I don't. We're waiting until the five-year mark to actually take this moment to review this, and I think we can do better. That's, that's so. My motion is that we actually create a frequency of reviewing this versus waiting for the five years. Well, I guess I'll, I have to one, yep, yep. The, the word motion. Where okay. It's nothing to. We can have a discussion at okay. this point, okay. and. Uh, and take everyone's suggestions okay. into, into account, but there's really nothing to add on at this point. Okay. Um, the one thing I would suggest maybe is another perspective is think about in the, in the time you've been here and for all of us, how often do we in, would do we get ourselves involved in the master plan? Right. My take is not very often, and when we do, um, is is in, when we have. Are there glaring uh, issues with it that right. re would require a revision? So my takeaway is the infrequency in which we really get involved. As Brian said, if we were a different community in which there was a lot of development pressure, right. then we probably would need to look at this. But we well, the reason the reason I suggest this mm -hmm. for this discussion is there's there's data. Uh, analytical data that's, or items that are being identified with action items, right? Uh, tools and priorities based off of the implementation policies of the dream or the master plan. There's no feedback being provided back or no discussion being held as far as what, who is, who are we partnering, partnering with to do these types of things? Like we as, if, if we are the key holders, so to speak, uh, providing guidance to the board, we should kind of know what these, these items are, long-term range goals, based off of purchases and development rights, so on and so forth. There's there's certain columns here of responsibility that's being put on us. And I I don't see any of this. Right? All I see is, is this document in front of me. So I guess that's why I, I understand what you're saying, that the frequency at which we... we well, and the, the how applicable those columns are. Development pressures would force the review of that more often. But can't tell you the last time we've had a development before us right. in which we've had to go to the master plan, look at rezoning, look How about at densities. transportation? Do we ever have any conversations about transportation? Well, well largely transportation signs. is the function of the county. Well, like things like speed limit signs and stuff, that is actually a township item if I'm, if I'm understanding it. No? Um, so, oh, it is a county yeah. thing. Okay. Yeah. We okay. can request, but they can do not. Oh, okay. Yeah. The roads are the yeah. kind of transportation. And I think okay. it's important to understand that we do, we, we are always timing of the master plan. When somebody requests rezoning, we look at what's the master plan. Because the master plan isn't the zoning. Zoning is the rules now. Master plan is something to look at when you get a request of what will that meet what we're looking to do in the future. So we, we're always looking, not daily because we don't get requests, but the well, like, citizens requesting certain actions or bringing actions to you and applications, you guys would utilize the master plan to determine some of those requirements. Like, for instance, the draining commission, right, or right. the drain tiles. You know you're aware of all the issues on Fish Lake Road, right? 
what's being done, I mean, how are we looking at it from a master plan perspective? As how, how are they maintaining our roads? If we've identified Oakland County as that entity at which they maintain our roads, what are they doing within that partnership? What are they providing our township from a, a I mean, I don't know if I'm out there on this, but you understand what I'm saying? Does it board? So, I mean, if, if they're maintaining it, mm -hmm. how, how often are they maintaining it? How often are they doing the, the work on the, on the drain commission, or the drain tiles on Fish Lake Road, for an example? You know, are we getting that information, I guess? How, what's the frequency, you know? Are they being proactive with the drain tiles? Are, why are we having the roads flooded because of the fact they're not being cleaned? You know, those types of things. Where's it being flooded? All the way, all the way down. All the way down my road, from Rose Center down past, well, past my house, past the park entrance. It gets yeah, flooded yeah, there all the yeah, time. It does flood there all the time. Yeah, so It floods right over the road. So, yeah, so swamp, I would think our members of the township yeah, side. would want to know oh, yeah. why this is happening. And if the plan describes the fact that, that we've identified Oakland County as that entity at which uh, they're partnering, partnering with us based off the implementation or the actions, what are they doing? I mean, it talks about partnerships, uh, I can't read it. Uh, plans, re, uh, plan review, zoning, ongoing priority, short range priority, and long range priority. I mean, I would think we, as the as the, the identified as uh, within the implementation, should have that information to understand what's being done. I don't know. So, as part of that is, I don't know that that changes your master plan. No, I think okay. that's communication you need to be having with the road commission. Well, is that us or is that the board? That's so the, typically the board. Yeah. But it doesn't define it that way, though. It but says that we're the sole. But I think what you're talking about for the master plan would be Rose Township wants to look at taking over the drainage system and put it in as the master plan that one of the goals is to implement Rose Township as being. No, I mean, what are they doing? What are they providing us to say that you are meeting those, those data points to complete that work? Like, if we've partnered with them and identified them as being the individuals to maintain those local roads, and we've identified the fact that we have these issues. What's being done as far as feedback to the to the board? I right? think that's part of the master plan. Okay. Right. I don't know. I think that's just a communication that needs to happen. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that, that's more of an agreement between the Rose Township and Oakland County Road Commissions wow. in that they would request some sort of maintenance schedule and such. But, I mean, again, we want to make sure the master plan doesn't have things in it that they say, well, you even got that in it. So how important is that when you're, when you're relying on Oakland County and your master plan? Telling you how when they're going to maintain. Well, I just don't know why we have data points when there's no output right. data. Right. We've right. identified outgoing, we've identified long range, short range, ongoing, right. but there's no data points coming back to the to, to the committee to identify what's being done with those those items. Well, I think it's what's in our control. Reasonably. Okay. I don't so know. So the district, the implementation of goals, and the other one thing like that. Those really are out of our control. Um, I mean, that that's that I guess to take it to a farther point is. Do we need to put the master plan in the garbage has to be picked up that day is put up? If it's not, we need to look at the implication of doing something because the garbage is out. That's an that would mean that would be an ordinance. That's an ordinance. That's not a plan. Right. 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 So yeah. And those are, remember zoning and ordinances are rules that you have to follow. Master plans are guidelines of what you want would like eventually to happen. So they're also guidelines for you to follow if appropriate. So we had that problem with Munger a few years ago too. Mm -hmm. Same thing. And they just built the road up. Right, because it seems but like still, a lot of this master still, plan was built off. But when we get a, a lot of moisture, it still floods over. Right, and it seems it's like a lot over. of the master plan was built off of the survey that was done in 2017. As I reviewed the survey, most of the data that was inputted into the plan was based off of that survey. The survey hasn't been done since 2017. <coughs> so I don't know. I, I guess it kind of goes into what you were saying about how often and the, and the cost, right? right? But if we're looking at it in a manner of proactively bringing these pieces to, to the, the committee, we can then, at the five-year mark or prior, take that moment to get this stuff updated to reflect what's going on, I guess. What well, do you think that people's opinions have changed in the four years? Well, I do, definitely, yeah. I, def I definitely do. I mean, we talked about the fact that a moment ago, I think someone brought up the fact about possibly removing that whole section uh, V or uh, Section Five of the Hickory Ridge and Rose Center, and yet we have a senior housing unoccupied over on Davisburg Road. That's the grass is growing ten feet tall. I'm exaggerating, but it's just sitting there not being used. So it's like, 
if, if, if why aren't we talking about that, right, from the master plan perspective? Is that an example of why we shouldn't have that in the, uh, in the book, the master plan? I don't know. Well, you have to remember that that was that was done before my time, where he picked your zoning and he picked his zoning, and he wanted an office building, and then he didn't couldn't fill up the office building, so he wanted to be senior center. He came to you guys. I think some of you were on it when Lopez came and he wanted the seniors. So we we re, we redid the zoning, looked at the master plan. Exactly, it, my point exactly. We zoned it, got it to what it's want. Never had it. Yep. Senior. Then he passed away. Now his wife has sold it. Now it's going to somebody else. And we don't know what it's going to be. But again, that's one business in the township which pretty much says Rose Township isn't a great place to have a business. <laughs> right. And if we're not looking at it in a five in a five year plan, right, we have to be looking forward, not at the moment. So right. if in five years I gotta believe that there's a new generation coming through that's wanting to buy some of these homes or build some of these houses or live in these homes, they're gonna want things a little different, right? right. And I think I know that I think the township would love to see a survey, uh, but that's just me. Yeah, and, and again, I'm, I apologize for my ignorance. It's no, not no, being it's part of it, it, but I just felt like uh, that these are concerns that I had, right. and I spoke with someone uh, else about it. And then finally, obviously, going to what you were talking about with the recreation plan, uh, I'm glad that that can because that's all antiquated data. It's, I mean, it's outdated material. So, I, and that's why I say that I would think that some of this would be. Uh, I would imagine it's all outdated. No, not all of it. I, I doubt your that inventory that has yeah. changed at all. Yeah. No, some of the, like for instance, when I was looking at some of the maps, they don't reflect the park across my across the street. I walk those all the time, and but that's in Oakland County, from my understanding. We have, yep. we have Oakland County so Park again, here's a situation where Oakland County is this. Are they supposed to be providing us output information as these things evolve and change? Shouldn't we be putting that stuff into our plans so that people that do come to our community can take this master plan and go, oh. Well, they have this, they have that, they have this. Part, yeah, part of that document does look at the recreation resources of county and or surrounding municipalities. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, Rose Oaks is mentioned in there. Yes. Yeah. You yeah, think we're going to get that much of an influx of younger people that are going to want to try to change things? I, I don't know. I don't know, but I, but to wait till the moment happens, I I mean, I think that's what I was saying. I, we don't have to make changes, and that was one of the things I talked to Brian out in the parking lot. I'm not saying to make the change, but... We should be talking about some of these things, even if it was a subcommittee that was identified to maybe, you know, once a year come together and review the documents and provide it to the committee. I don't know. But I just, when I got this, I'm like, wow, this is a lot, right, for a, for somebody brand new, right? And and the fact, I knew what we were focusing on, um, but there's so much more here that, to me, if I would have known this stuff, new to the community, I mean, obviously I know most of the people in the community, but these types of things here, I didn't, you know, so... See, that's probably true for the majority of yeah, the right. yeah, so, yeah. And it goes back to my point. If we don't, when, when we're, nine out of ten times, we're looking within the ordinances when we're trying to, based on what's before us, with maybe this as, as a secondary, as Dave said, a reference document to line those two up together, right? Is it, does it fit the ordinance? Does it meet the master plan? So I go back to over the last five years, based on the things that have been before us, and based on eventually when we get some um, survey and, and citizen feedback, what they would like to see in terms of parks or commercial uses, um, um, we need to take that input and then determine, do we need to make an alteration here? It's an iterative process, but I would say the thing today that we need to think about is what we've seen. And I'll just use an example. So, and I, Jim, forgive me, I don't know if you were part of the uh, I was on the board. call. Pardon me? I was on the call when you guys did it. It was during COVID, right? I right. think. Yeah, I was on, on the call when it you guys discussed it. For yeah. the wildlife solutions yes. oh, no. application. No, so thought. that, to me, was the only right. real one in the last five years I've seen where Okay, maybe we should really revisit the master plan in that special use area. That's the commercial zone of Rose Center and Hickory Ridge. Because it's become clear to me, and Dave just said, the need for commercial real estate and business, there's not, there's not a strong driver for commercial market here. Those four corners have been vacant forever. Not to say they will be forever. Um, but we've, we've designated an area that 
facilitates commercial growth. The place on Davisburg Road continues to remain vacant, so that tells you there's no real market for office space or yeah. church or senior housing at this point, at least in the township. Not to say it won't be in the next five years, particularly with the demographics. So it's things like that that I would suggest. Um, the special land or the um, master plan zoning map, we spent a lot of time last time making sure that we had the colors clustered as best as we could in terms of putting density in certain areas and then leaving open space. Because if there's any one single, you know, out of our objectives and, and guiding lights and principles, it's maintained the rural character of Rose Township is, you know, is and has been number one. And I would assume if we did a survey again today, that has not changed. Jim, most Jim, of the I would believe people would, be wanting, people would want speed limit signs, for example. You know, those are the types of things that... I mean, That's sure. what we need to find out. And personally, I think this is where we need we need citizen input. We, yeah. When we've done this, Debbie, I don't who did the survey last time. This will be my third iteration. The the, the feedback we get is very minimal, <laughs> right? I mean, it's literally a handful of people. Yeah. Just just my opinion. Sur surveys are not typically the well. The and, best and methods, I don't think last time, but before that, then we did workshops, mm -hmm. and I. And I'm all for doing whatever we we're over we're Rose Pioneer and we set up you know different brought people in, showed them the parks plan, showed them the master plan, and tried to get input you know more one on one. I think we should do everything we can to get as much citizen feedback because what always happens is then it affects somebody in their backyard, and we're bound to this now. And I remember the marijuana uh, the implementation of marijuana or the discussion around that. There's a lot of concern around how they were districted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think with that set of lenses, then then we have to look at this document and go, okay, is there anything glaring in this that really needs to be? And I, I do think this five-year period, what, we should, in my mind, and, and I think from what I've learned or you know, we've been educated on, you don't change the master plan. You, know, you, you, right. you say, kind of save it up and do it because it should be a lot more of a, um, a dream. Pardon me? A dream. Yeah, it's, it's five years okay, out, sure. and it's a vision. It's not an absolute like the ordinances are. Yeah, and technically, it's a 20-year it's a plan mm -hmm. is really what it is, but it has to be looked at at least every five sure. to make sure that you're still on the okay. right path. And again, if you've had pressures or significant changes or something's really missing, there's a, a big gap, as you guys had mentioned, that's when you definitely want to make sure you get into it and address it. And that's why I just said, I, I just used the demographics as an example. If you're not going to change any of the real guidance of the plan, you don't need to update your demographics. There's no there's no point in doing an amendment just to do that. Yeah, for me, though, the implementation, I think, is there's some things that can be looked at within that section as we move forward. There's actually um, a correction that needs to be put in place on uh, page 41. It actually has subpart... Uh, B twice, and it should be C for the action table. I mean, that's minor, right? Formatting well, stuff, we're not going to, that's, right. that's a But if we do fix. update it, though, and with the action with the action piece, the action table, like I said, that's probably one of my, because we're going into community, community profiles, things like that. There's a lot of data that's being uh, output data from that section. So, mm -hmm. so well, let's... Well, need brought up a valid point. Um, think back... Uh, Ten, maybe 10 years, you know, what's, what's changed in the plan? As I see, um, well, first of all, um, before I start, I'd like to get the uh, zoning map brought up to date. It was published in uh, June 13, 2007. I think that would be help to the committee and people in the future because the uh, zoning map does not really indicate what's there today, i.e. Eagle Road and Davisburg, the development. Mm -hmm. um, that was planned a long five, ten years ago. The, the, the economy delayed the development of that site. Mm -hmm. That is the last piece of land that that is designated for that type of use, do we want to have something in, 
in the future designate some area, but I believe we do have it designated, that that kind of close development could take place. So, to me, looking back, Eagle, Eagle Road, Davisburg Road, is finally coming, almost coming to fruition. As I noted previously, in the northwest corner of Oakland County, that's the last so-called high-density developments that's taken place. The ones in White Lake and others have been filled in and it appears the same thing taking place in Holly Township. So that's a point that should be discussed. Do we have, want to have another area in, the, in, our master plan, in our master plan? I'm not saying you need to do it now, mm -hmm. but I think there should be notation of it. The other thing is the, we, spend a lot of, we spend a lot of time and um, the developers spend a lot of time on the, on the Hickory Ridge Road uh, area. It didn't go through. Well, that area has been has been designated commercial since 1959. It's always been there. So, do we just let it sit there, or do we want to change it? Or do we want to scrap it? It's too bad that that development didn't make, take place. It would have been it would enhance that area. And also, the thing that keeps us in the transportation. Keep in mind, East Rosetta Road is the next, the next diagonal corridor relief from US 23. And I believe in one discussion I had with the Road Commission, I think in 2023, 24, or 25, they're going to re, re gravel Road Center Road from Hickory Ridge up to the county line. And, and we've and We've had, we've had some discussions, just brief general discussions about maybe paving the section of Rose Center Road. So that's a corridor. When you talk about transportation corridor, let's face it, that's, that's going to come. Maybe not immediately now, but we should maybe make a notation of that. Get the road commission in here and see what are you, what are you really doing about it. So in summary, um, I'd like to have the uh, zoning map brought up to date. There have been changes. Um, if you look at the just to, if you look at the Davisburg uh, Road Center intersection, it's, it's it's still ag. It's now it's now it's and I look at the future plan. It's two categories: uh, estate residential and rural residential. Right. Uh, I thought. Well, but was that all one category, Dave? Yes. Well, I'll change, I'll change one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah it just that's yeah, right. it sounds like two. You're right. But right. I mean, but, the, but there's two designations there, two, two, two color code designations. Yeah. One is state residential and rural residential agriculture. So, but, well, the but, problem is about, must have been 10 years ago, but sure. We came up, or I don't want to say it was determined that we were going to create an estate residential zoning district that would be two and a half acres. Our map shows that on there. It's never <coughs> happened. There is no such thing as an estate residential God. zoning in any <laughs> but that, So that's something maybe we want to look at, but that was talked about as a shift from the five and eight and a half. Well, we thought there was a need for it. There hasn't been any outcry for anything. Yeah, like yeah. That. I, mean, I, I, I have no, I have no. But think, things got to change. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, I, I, so there is negotiations. Things took place. Hopefully, now that's going to get going. Right. It, it still isn't going yet, but it's going <coughs> to Right. And yeah, that's going to increase the revenue tax base for the township. Uh, you know, other mm -hmm. services with it. So that, that, that's my only two points. I, yeah. I think, I think, uh, at least the zoning map. It's pretty old. I, I think your zoning maps up to date. I think we did one maybe we go to the last no, 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 no. Uh, master no, plan no, no, no. zoning and master plan. We went through that. Don't, and don't no, confuse zoning, the zoning map, June 13, 2007. Plan. Don't confuse the zoning ordinance. No, zoning talking, no, I, 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 I know the zoning map is not part of the master plan. Right. I know. I did, I, but, but it's always been a bug in my, bug in my craw that is, that is too old. Okay. I don't think it is. 
Well, take a look. Take a look at. Uh, well, I think the take, 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 take a look at Davis Burger Road and Eagle Road. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's, green, it's solid green ag RP or preserve. Okay, today it is a huge hundred or not hundred 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 twenty five lot development. That many? Pardon? That many? Well, yeah, I think so that uh, David is another number. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of a lot of sites in there. Yes, it's an acre and a half. Yeah. Hey, how, how many how many units are going in on that site, Dave? Pardon? How many units are going in on Eagle Road Road Center? I mean, Eagle Road, Davisburg. Oh, Davisburg, 50. 50-some. Sorry, exaggerated. Yeah. Still, I, I, well, I, I think that's a good number. It's two phases. It's huh? still a big number. It's two phases, so yeah. initially 20 Yeah, I mean, but it's, it's, not, it's not the five or ten acre parcels we're talking about. That's all. Right. Yeah. That, that's when we did a cluster option. Where sure. They're allowed to be smaller, but they still get the same numbers if they would have been five that's, acres that's, in size. That's my only point. My only yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. future, I, I know there's... there's they're, they're, the terms are different between right. one and the other, right. <laughs> but when you look at the terms and comparable, and you look at what's the, what's there now, right. that's what I'm that's the only reason I brought it up. Right. Uh, so, the so in summary, okay, uh, there is there in the next 20 or 30 years there's going to be as much demand. Go back, go back 20, 30 years, and see what's changed in the township. Okay, there's been more tank and ten acre splits. Uh, uh, that Davisburg Road thing's been sitting there for a long, block of land sitting there for a long time. Yes, okay, all of a sudden, now there's a change. Mm -hmm. So, if there's a demand for that density, right. then where else in the township would we like to have it? Now, significantly, when with that statement, you look at the future plan, and lo and behold, you look at the southwest corner of the township. That was all ag, and now it's split up to ag and rural residential. So maybe well, positive, but we've answered that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we talked about that. Yeah. So, so uh, that, that's that the condition. Then the Hickory Ridge thing. Uh, this was a good, a nice scheme of of recreating a historical historic yes. development site that was never a historical site. Since day one, it just happened to be an intersection that the, if the people didn't have the gas station, there would be nothing. Mm -hmm. But keep in mind, it is going to be an intersection, a major intersection, in the future when Rose Center develops. So, uh, do we, yeah, do we eliminate as more? Do we eliminate that section from the master plan? Um, this concept has been sitting there for at least 10, 15 years. Yeah. Nothing ever happened. So therefore, is it really viable? At least somebody's that's nice, that's nice idea. When, when, when you look at a lot of land planning yeah. concepts, you know, remember uh, there was uh, the walkable uh, streets. All the you know, all, all, all the, the uh, uh, roundabouts put around Fenton and other communities. Oh, 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 you know, the core core planning. It's all gone because they found they needed through traffic going through. So this is a nice conceptual. Long range land planning thing, but it is it? But is it really? Is it really? Is it really a, a new? Is it a concept that's even viable today or in the future? Mm -hmm. So if it's not, then let's uh, clean the book up for the next people around. That's all I have. On master plan. Go ahead. And you said you volunteered for the Parks and Rec Committee. Pardon? You said you, uh, you know what? <laughs> uh, I think I think we ought to dole it out to a, a, a chapter a chapter of each person. Mm -hmm. Not not let it, 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 people take it on the whole. Yeah. That's a good idea. No, any, anyways, yes. No, that's a good but we're not talking about the master plan. The class of rec plan. Talk about whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's all I have. To keep, the, to keep, the, to keep the dialogue going here. All right. Well, how about we'll go with this, Mara? What what are your thoughts? Is there anything over the last five years that uh, require glaring change to the not glaring, but yeah. My uh, thinking was, um, I mean, I essentially read through the whole thing just to you know refresh my memory and everything. And the only thing, as you already mentioned, in the last five years has been that one uh, site plan review that we did that was in that section. But even at that point, um, 
it our what we have, you know, as the guidelines <clears throat> and what was in the master plan, the only thing that was really glaring was are we going to do the sidewalks and things like that. In other words, there's not a huge mismatch other than do we want that area to have that full development. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, which doesn't really fit. Like, I think that was probably a bold idea in its time. I like the idea, but it's one of those that we don't have the infrastructure or the fiscal reality to, to have something like that happen. So that part I don't think is realistic. Uh, but I don't think what we don't want to do is we don't want to change the um, you know, the zoning in that area. We have very little commercial, so we, we don't want that. So I think what we need to do is we meet, need to make sure that we're regulating the right thing and that we're still, whatever we decide to do, still has reflects the attitudes of our residents, which, you know, I think has been, you know, a rural feel to it, that type of thing. And that particular intersection, I think we should take into consideration, and it might be why it was selected, is that essentially there were two early settlements um, in our township. One was Buckhorn Village, which came first, which was at DeMode and Milford, and then the second one was there, which was Hickory Ridge and Rose Center Road. So it does have a, it was essentially our second settlement um, at that time, and it was eventually known as Rose Corners, but it wasn't that right away. Um, you know, it had, uh, you know, a, a tavern, I think actually for a while it had two taverns, uh, uh, you know, and just what you'd have at that, you know, at that time frame. So anyway, that's something that we might want to consider. Um, but I guess I, I'm kind of leaning towards other than that, which can be taken care of when we do individual site plans, I don't know if that's really enough to open up the entire process. Do you know what I'm saying? That in other words, we got through that site plan review knowing that, okay, there's a little bit of an issue here, um, but it wasn't a huge issue, really. Um, so I guess I kind of lean towards, you know, we could actually just, you know, not do anything right now, and then in the next five years get be gathering a lot more information, because as, you know, we're suggesting, there might be a lot more uh, changes that we have to take into consideration. I just don't think that idea is realistic, but I, we sort of can take care of it, um, it, you know, by case by case at this point. So, um, it, in terms of our goals, um, I didn't see any need to update. I thought that, um, you know, so the goals were still pertinent um, to what we're doing. And um, there's one more point, I think. Yeah, and then I think just they, we want to keep it commercial, but um, are those businesses there, you know, compatible with our agrarian culture, our natural features, you know, that kind of thing. I think we still need to consider that. And I like the idea of, you know, thinking of the, the history that had been there as well. So anyway, that's all I had to, that, that, those were my thoughts. I wanted to hear what others had to say about it, but that's where I was thinking. On the matter of the history, to me, whatever history was there, there are no, like the township hall and in this area, you still have the buildings left from that historical center. There's really nothing in my mind historically to build off of in that area, unless we consider. Yeah, there's bills nothing to be remaining the, other than that it was there, exactly. Yeah, understood, but from a, either a master plan or even a zoning perspective or planning perspective. Right. There's nothing. I mean, what I guess I'm trying oh, I to guess, follow. yeah, maybe I wasn't clear. What I was thinking that I don't think the that sub plan is feasible for the reasons I said. You know, just you know, fiscally, uh, infrastructure wise, that it's just not a feasible thing. But if we wanted to pay homage to the, what that was to be, you know, we could consider, you know, that you know, the, like the that we want more of uh, historical or traditional architecture in oh. that area. In other words, pay homage to the history mm -hmm. and what that that idea back then, you know, in the sub plan. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. that, yeah. Okay. 
put a, put a couple of new taverns over there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I heard loud and clear. Right, yeah, a couple, yeah, encourage log building or something, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, that, that, that was my thinking. I just didn't see anything glaring other than that particular piece. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if, if that needs to be opened up to... I don't know if there's enough changes to, to warrant the process. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Just pass me by. I'm too old to think past this. Yeah. You have the wisdom. No, I, I like things... I, I, I agree with I agree with Mara. The um, just try to keep things keep things going evenly and not uh, not go to any extremes with things. So, do you feel there's anything in the current plan either that's missing or is extreme? Not that I see now. But what about the that kind of central downtown concept? And in, in, in based on what we went through when we were looking at, at uh, one. I don't know. I think I think I think people that come out here kind of like the fact that it is rural. You're you're not. They're not looking for. They're kind of looking for a places where you have to go a long ways to get a whole bunch of buildings and a whole bunch of stores. And I think the the hi history of Rose Township, the the fact that it's rural. And it has stayed there. I mean, I've I've been in Rose Township for I don't even know how many years. It's been a long time now, and I've seen I've seen a lot of things change. But um, I still like the fact that I'm out in the country. I grew up in in North Dakota, <laughs> so you know, to me, coming out to to Rose Township was really nice, based on where I'd lived. Uh, in Commerce Township, which was more of a rural, it was not a big uh, commercial township, but coming out to Rose Township really was nice many years ago. And I, I, I see, I'm thinking now, uh, Fish Lake Road it used to be such a nice, slow road. Mm -hmm. Now it's it's like a, some days it's like a freeway, you know. Mm -hmm. You see, especially after the after the people were cut off from Milford Road and they came to Fish Lake Road, um, and the, the fact that there's tr big huge trucks sometimes going down, and you know darn well that they're doing that to avoid. Someplace else, and I think that I think a lot of people have discovered Fish Lake Road, and they're they're not getting they're not getting stopped from anything because it's pretty rare to see um, any uh, patrols out there. I mean, you see it once in a while, but it's a pretty rare occasion. And I I, I don't live that far from the road, and I do a lot of stuff outside. So, you know, you see this, but I mean, the, the, well, Debbie knows too, the traffic is absolutely, it's crazy sometimes, and they get a straightaway, and just even driving, as I get older, I try to be more careful on the road, and, you know, you feel like you've got to pull off the road when you see some of these people, and that's the sad part of what's happening, and, you know, as, as the years go by, like I said, the, of course, Debbie knows she's been out there. You know, I, she was pretty young when we first moved out there. <laughs> well, she was. I mean, not know, that I'm she's sorry. old now. <laughs> not that she's old now. I don't mean that. Oh, it's, uh, I know. I say, no, but you know, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, <laughs> her her little brother and uh, my oldest son, who's uh, we're the same age. <laughs> so I mean, it's a uh, it it's it's a big change and. And Fish Lake Road is a road that gets a lot of traffic after Milford Road was, you know, was closed down for a while. I mean, Hickory Ridge is like a freeway. On oh, gravel train. You know. <laughs> I mean, it's just, you know, for, for those of us who've been here for a long time, uh, it's way, way more modern than we like, mm -hmm. you know. But we, you know, the, we, ha we have to change with the times. 
but I, I think we just we try to keep things we try to keep things in a normal you know normal, but watch for what's coming down the pike. Mm -hmm. And you know basically I'm that's why I I like to being on this this uh, committee because I. I like to make sure I know what's going on, you know, to keep keep up with uh, what's going on. And it's it's hard, you know. <laughs> and it's nice to see younger people moving out, but then I don't know where you lived before. Ortonville. Uh, where? Ortonville, Bird Road. Oh, okay. Um, but just just I mean, you can see. They, I'm they sure you can. Did. I'm sure you can see the change from when you. From when your dad oh. moved out, you know, on Fish Lake Road. Yeah, Rex and all them, the way. Yeah, yeah. But it was I mean, the community maintained. And that. it's not, it's not that we've even had that many houses, many that much building. It's just that when once people discover a road like Fish Lake Road that goes straight through, uh, you know, I, I don't know whether there's that many people that are. In that big of a hurry, but boy, it's it certainly is used way, way more than uh, we actually you would have outside. expected it to. Being a dirt road, <laughs> we wait outside on the porch to wait to see if somebody launches that second hill just before the yeah. you know, flat area going up to Rose Township. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. We all do. <laughs> but in terms of the master plan in general, <laughs> it sounds like you're pretty <laughs> happy with it. Yes, I'm. I'm happy that you know the way things are moving and uh, trying to keep track of you know keep keep up to date you know and watch. We aren't. Mo I don't think we're moving too fast, but you want to kind of watch for that. <laughs> of course, like I, we, I look around and this, some of us have been here for a long time, so um, I guess that's how we keep. Keep a tabs on things. Thanks, Tim. That's enough. <laughs> My turn. Um, I would concur with most of the comments here tonight, especially Maura. She pretty much summarized what I feel. Um, I think the document. I first of all, I know several of us have been doing this process multiple times. And I think the last time we did this, which is the document we have before us, we all put a lot of time into what we have in front of us. It's not perfect, but I know we work very hard at getting it to where we're at. Um, and, I, and I don't think in the past five years we've really had any glaring issues where we've had to refer to that. So to change just for the sake of change um, is not necessarily a good thing. You know, probably like Maura said, and I think everybody here, the little hamlet that we had designed in our Hickory Ridge uh, Road Center area might have been a little unrealistic at the time, but it, it sounded like something we would hope to do, especially with the potential of the school going on one side. And, um, but I, I, to change that or to take that out, I, don't, I mean, I don't think we need to do that at this point um, because in another, I think commerce is changing right now. I, you know, the need for a drugstore or this, uh, it's, you go to a mall now and there's people, there, nobody's shopping at a mall anymore. They're all, so, so I think what we have, if we get more, Challenges to that setting, and we sure had a lot of challenges when we were trying to get that through, but honestly, I mean, it was zoned for what it's zoned. And I think that's probably the thing we have to keep in mind, is many of us who've been here for many years remember how, or know how things are, but that's just the way it was. Not realizing that in your backyard, you have a commercial node, or you have a light industrial node. Just the fact that it hasn't been developed doesn't mean that somebody coming in doesn't have the right to develop that. So we have to be aware of that, but we can't, um, 
I just think what happened on that last site plan development was, um, you handled it very well, Michael, but I'll tell you, um, he had every right to do what he needed to do there, and we need to keep that in mind when we set these sites up that it is going to affect somebody's backyard. But the fact that, as Glenn said, this went back to the 50s, and as more of brought to our attention. I mean, that was, quote, the commercial note of the time back then, even though it was a couple of taverns and whatever. But, you know, um, so I think people coming in have to be aware of what might be in their backyard, even though there's nothing in their backyard right now. And, and we need to be a little cognizant of that, but not to the point where, unless there's a lot of pressure coming at, that we need to change the document. So. I just know how much time we put into it. I think, and what we've had, how often we've had to look at this over the past five years, I feel comfortable that we're in a good spot with what we have. And if we see over the next coming five years that we've got these different issues and we look at this and look at our vision, if we need to change that at that point, I think that would be a time to look at it. But, and just for uh, for our knowledge, there's no there's nothing that prevents us from we have to do, we have the one thing we have to do is review and update the park plan. Correct. But if two years from now some thing comes out of the sky that we don't understand, there's nothing that would preclude us from reevaluating the master plan. Is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. We can do that anytime. Anytime you want. What you what you just want to try to do is be. You want to try to be as efficient as you can because there is a process. Because of the process and, and the cost. You, you don't want to, you don't want to update, and again, you have to remember it's, it's a 10 to 20 year document. You don't want to update it right. and amend it every year. Right. But yeah, there's there's no doubt. I mean, again, if there were if we there were rumblings out there, if there were things that we were aware of, um, either internal pressures or external pressures that might change things here, those would be things that, you know, we would want to make sure we were looking at. I'm just... I'm not aware of any Understood. at this point. Like now, it's some unforeseen. Doesn't thing. mean that they won't arise. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but usually, you know, again, in, in evaluation of what's going on in, in the adjacent communities, you start to figure those things right. out. And if that warrants a change here, then by all means, um, let's do so. But at this point in time, again, that's just my opinion. No, I, I don't believe there's any significant land use. But following Teresa's logic, if this fundamentally the thing is sound. There may be a little nuances here and there, and if some circumstances were to pop up in two years, there's nothing to preclude us from going back and reevaluating if we were to leave it as is today. Absolutely. There's no harm in that. Absolutely. The one thing that I do, um, I always encourage my communities to do is when we do sort of, I guess, complete the review process, if it is the commission's determination that the plan remains current and does not need to be amended or updated, I do like to have that done in a formal action <laughs> so that we have that on record because that will be one thing, um, and again, I don't foresee this happening, but we don't know. If you were challenged uh, in the future on a development project and, and it got to litigation and they, and they wanted to say, well, the township hasn't kept up on their plan, and we can go back and say we have absolutely followed to the T what the statute requires. And then we have that evidence to present should that occasion arise, which hopefully it doesn't. And it probably won't, but we can't control that. So, mm -hmm. you know, but if it did, I do like to have a formal action in place. Plus, then it also lets the board know where the commission stands, at least in its opinions on the document. But doesn't the, the ordinances trump the, the master plan anyway? That's what I thought. So the ordinances are law. The master yeah, plan's right. a guide. Right. But the idea is that if a community, a community is required to keep their plan up to date by state law. Mm -hmm. So okay. if you ended up in litigation on a project, they want high density residential, your plan shows agricultural preserve, and you haven't kept your plan up to date, that is grounds potentially that would benefit the developer side in litigation. But you have kept your plan up to date, you have reviewed it, and you have kept it current. Did, the so, did anything change with the marijuana? I remember there was a lot of discussion around the zoning for uh, and how you could grow versus 
remember that? Part yeah, we it? adopted an ordinance. Was, was, the there, was there any changes with, within that that would affect? No. 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 But I think the big thing last time is because of what the state had required in certain things in regards to the master plan, we decided we were going to have to do it anyway, so let's make sure we do a thorough review this time. And I think even the one before that may have not been as thorough as the last one we did. I think the last one was, was one of the best ones we've done, this, except this. maybe 20 years ago. Because I remember that one where we did have a meeting at the school right. and different right. things. But was that, that was like, but I think the problem with that was we didn't have master plan in 10 years or something. Somehow we missed I would a say. cycle on that. Right. So that's why we really made sure we covered yeah. everything in that aspect. If it, you know, I mean, go back. The last iteration of this, a lot of it was the readability of the document. Right, right, right. right. This, Clarity, yes. Yeah, I mean, LSL at the time, or State Bill, spent a ton of time. I don't even know who it is anymore, either. <laughs> well, Frank, it's we, still but, but, but you guys did a great job in, in making this much more reader friendly. Yeah, I think the trick was the big one was 98, or I think 98 was the big one, and then there were minor amendments along the way. Mm -hmm. um, but and there then we had go been, been anything substantial, and the statutes also changed uh, in, in that duration as well. And that was one of the critical things that you guys knocked out last time. Mm -hmm. Do we need to have a, like a public hearing or something? Let the public come in to, to look at this before we. No. But before we give the okay. So I so just, let me, uh, I just let, want to. Let, let's just go around the horn here. Um, excuse me. But I might forget Teresa. my question. Yeah. Well, <laughs> let, let Teresa finish. I finished. Are right, you okay? Yeah. yeah, thank you. All right. So I'm sorry. I just want to make sure that everybody <laughs> okay. gets their. Uh, so um, I go ahead. Whoever would like to go ahead. I was just going to ask. You said that it's the, the census piece is pretty easy to implement into the the document, or is that, or is that just something that we update because that that, that does affect our, our our grants and things like that. I would think. So, I mean, is well, that going here? Oh, that's for the, the, the park plan. It's defined, right. Absolutely. No, no, I know. Yep. So I'm talking about the park plan. Yeah. So those things, can, okay. All right. Yeah, because the last time we were in between census cycles, so all we could do was get the best and most current updates, estimates, and use the 7 o'clock projections. Now we have actual 2020 full data. So the fact of the matter is our population didn't change. Oh, yes. Plus or minus what, yeah, five or six again, it, you <laughs> haven't seen the significant pressures. We haven't seen huge growth, nor huge decline. And we already know the other two key items, which are family sizes and shrinking regularly, and senior population is a growing percentage of Because we like it here so much. But I think we're, we're still always, for the last 20 years, we've, we've always... We always know that yeah, there will come a day. We are the last bastion yep. in, in North Oakland County. You guys there, are surrounded by some communities that have some stuff going on. Right. Well, and that's what I mean. There is, oh, yeah. there that will be a growing. day, and I think we try to consider that and keep this as, as rural yeah. as possible. Well, and I think that's, again, as, and I'm just going to, maybe this will be the, the last thing I have to say tonight, but sort of Dave mentioned that the overarching goal of the plan has always been, and, and really this commission and the board's, to the best of my knowledge, preserving the rural character of this community. <laughs> and hey, you, all you have to do is look at the zoning map and the future land use map on the wall, and you see mostly light green and dark green. <laughs> and that's typically reflective of ag and or rural preservation with very low density residential development. So, yeah. so, so to kind of, I'll, I'll end this last question, and so can everyone on this board agree that there has been changes within the community profile? With the numbers and the, these this this data that's in here right now, I mean, I understand that that's not enough to change, and I'm not asking that we change this right now by any means, but that we actually look at this in a way of saying that you know, Village of Holly has changed, Groveland Town. These numbers, for from a community demographic standpoint, has changed, employment okay. rates, things of that nature. Then again, I would ask, okay, if we were to look at that mm -hmm. and not change it, does it? Does it change anything? Does it change anything within the master plan? Well, I think if, if we're at a net zero gain in our population, the demographics, okay, we, we could consider that. Does that cause us to change our master plan? Right, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying to, to do it right now, but like for instance, the uh, age breakdown. I mean, I know a lot of the folks around this area has, I mean, this was done in 2010. Okay, so that so that's knowledge. That's 20 years difference. So. But, but again, I go back, does that knowledge 
cause us to change anything in this document. So one thing is knowledge or data. The other thing is action. And so... So I guess I leave it to the board. Do, do we just look at that that way every time we, we look at this? Or every five years we potentially make an update proactively throughout the term of the five years and say, okay, this section here, we have new data to support the change that we then put this information in in pieces versus... I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying to change or update the book because I do understand the cost and the time, so on and so forth. But, but if I'm moving to this community, I'm looking at this right now, I'm thinking, okay, just from a demographic standpoint, uh, there's only two people in this whole thing that's 85 years old. I mean, a lot of this data is not, the, not correct. Okay. That's all I'm saying. The data is well, you know, it's a valid point. Can we, can we just make a, a, an amendment page or a supplement page to this document to bring that data up to date? You can, but we have to go through the whole process to do so. Just just by having a supplement, mm -hmm. amendment, or anything? Yep. So, 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 so that leads me to say, though, every five years, are we now going to say we're going to stifle the fact of updating it because this section here is just a minor comparison versus, I mean... The only thing I've suggested is it's, it's inefficient to only update your community profile. If the update Understood. to that community profile leads to changes in goals and objectives, programming recommendations, and your land use plan, then we do that all as part of one big update. But it's but if that's all you're going, if that's all you want to do is update those tables so they're 2020 census and not 2018 semcog projections, it's I, just it's I just think not that the it. impact is going to be more on the on the parks. Yeah. Than the master plan with the demographics, yeah. Because it, look, what you're talking about is the influx of uh, younger people coming in, and we've seen that down at the lake too, where there's a lot more younger people moving in down there, and they're starting to butt heads down there with the older folks, because okay. they 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 want they have different needs, they have different right. wants. Well, right. and, and maybe right. if I could, That's Mr. Right. Chair, too, maybe right. let me put this out there: is that maybe this is uh, you know I guess something to think about. As part of that park and rec update, we're going to have to look at some of the, the broader demographic data and update it. If we collectively, subcommittee, commission, or administration, Dave, myself, whatever, notice some significant or substantial change as a result of that update, those are things that we can you know, bring back to the full commission, too, and say, whoa, we didn't really expect to see this happen. Maybe that leads to the need for a new strategy, a new goal, a change in land use. So you know, maybe that's maybe that's the approach to take here is we'll gain some efficiencies by doing the one anyway. And if we see something that we think has a broader community impact than just the park and rec plan, that's something we can bring back to the full commission too. Excellent. I mean, again, Brian, the definition itself is where I'm kind of stuck. Like, where are we? You know, if you're looking at the implementation piece in the introduction that defines the commission and the, as the facilitators, the way that's spelled out, it puts us in a, in a way of being the stakeholders and accountable for the adjustments within this document. So I, I, I would rather see that than nothing at all be done. That's me personally. Uh, so. Do we do we wait until it hits us before we change? That's what I'm asking. Well, I think the question. The base, and I think what Ryan said is important. Look at the park and recreation, and does those demographics cause you to determine that there is changes needed to the master plan? Mm -hmm. yeah. But not right now say, let's put it in when we know it's probably not going to, because we really don't know those numbers. Well, we can get those with the park and recreation plan. And if there is something at that point, mm -hmm. then, so does this trigger this? If it doesn't, then why would we want to do that? Yeah, it triggers proactively looking at things right, versus right. But waiting until we got to make a change, to your point, to go in there and just change it. Right. And if, but if that, if that doesn't trigger it, then there's no need to. Right. I agree. So with we that. could use that information once we. So basically, look at doing it the other way yeah. park and recreation plan first to get the demographics. Because mm -hmm. it's required. Yeah. And yeah. if those demographics don't show us well, anything we, that would shock us, we can keep then an we eye. Have to do that. We can keep an eye on things, too, as, as things are changing, because they're going to change. Things are, things are changing every day now. And we can keep an eye on that. And before it really hits us, then maybe we can do something. 
You should, you We're just going to have to keep an eye on it. As the Planning Commission, you guys are going to get anything of any drastic changes is going to go to the township. Nothing's going to sneak by. Right. So anything that's going to happen that's going to require a big change with our philosophy or strategy, you're going to be aware of it because they're going to have to come to you. No, somebody's going to, not going to be able to come in and do something and all of a sudden it's there, a trailer park, a senior center, whatever. You guys will be well aware of it with the application unless they do it illegally, which you can't, you know. I think you, we you'll could. always know what's happening in the township except on single family residential property. I think we've got enough experience on this commission now to where to where we can we can see that and analyze that as it comes. Yeah, I'm very thankful for the knowledge you guys have. I mean, that, that's why I come to this, trying to be open minded about <coughs> these different pieces. So, um, you know, I work in a system uh, environment, so you know we look at things in a proactive manner. And when I saw this, like I said, I just saw mm -hmm. it differently. So. I think the struggle sometimes is a little bit is the little literal interpretation as opposed to the the shades of gray. <laughs> yeah, because this is it isn't a shades of gray document, but it isn't the ordinance, which is the, the absolute. Right. Yeah. And it's good to talk about this too. It's absolutely good, and this yeah. this is part. This is all part of the process. So, Jim, do you have anything else to add? No. <coughs> I, just mentioned, I would like to see it as, at least review it annually or something, or at least have some discussion or an agenda item put on that annually we review. You know, talk, is there any open to talk yep, about? Just to talk about <laughs> is there any changes, something of that nature? So one of one of the things that I, I do in some other communities is so the the planning enabling law uh, requires you all to prepare an annual report. And that's something that typically you would do with sort of first of the year, calendar year wise. That's usually a pretty good time to go out and just schedule.